Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Today in Climate Conversations, we talk with Ottawa Energy Policy Consultant Robert Lyman. Robert was one of our guest speakers at our May 9th, 2017 annual event. I talked with Robert about how the green blockadia and various avid, some would say rabid, environmental activists and ENGOs affect our economy, demanding keep it in the ground, no pipeline, no problem. He spoke of the balance of respectful discourse essential to any democracy. I'm going to, I'm going to have to judge fairly carefully to, to what extent I deal with that issue, whether it's in the presentation or, or in response to questions. Um, at heart, my concern is about public policy. It's about the fact that, that we as Canadians have many different public policy objectives, economic growth, social justice, health, security, and environmental quality. Environmental quality is only one of them. And to find ourselves in a situation where we might sacrifice all of our, our ob collective objectives for the sake of one is, is, is harmful to the, the fundamental public policy process. Um, and so I, I think that um, what's at stake here is in some respects fundamentally a challenge to our democracy. It's, it's important in any democracy when you're dealing with those competing types of objectives to maintain an open dialogue and, at, and to uh, maintain respect for opposing points of view. Um, again, the problem in many time, cases with uh, the people who feel it, that uh, climate change is catastrophic is that they're not prepared to listen to the other side of the story. And, and uh, it, that creates an atmosphere in which a healthy public policy debate is very difficult. It seems that a succession of governments have gone along to get along in agreeing to ever more stringent targets, sometimes to get votes, sometimes to play nice on the world stage, but with no particular intention of meeting these targets. But the next government inherits these demands and ever more vocal activists. The reality is that uh, a series of Canadian governments were advised by their officials that the targets that they were about to adopt were not attainable at, at present, uh, with present technology and uh, economics. They went ahead and they adopted them anyway because they felt, frankly, that there's no downside to promising to reduce emissions, only to actually doing so. Uh, and, um, and so you, we, we find ourselves in a situation where the uh, targets were successively missed and in, as a consequence they adopted ever more stringent targets. Um, and uh, at, at some stage people will call a halt. Uh, the reason is that while the politics of it is a, bit, a little bit cynical, if you will, um, politicians are still left with one significant problem from that. And that is that these unfulfilled promises give to the environmental groups a proverbial two-by-four with which they can beat the federal politicians about the head and shoulders. And they do. Robert had some observations of Canada's Prime Minister who initially framed himself as a climate leader and a champion to climate laggards. Now, with legally authorized pipelines set for construction, it, it seems like various regional parties are either blocking or attempting to use their vocal blockadia to make money for social license from companies that have received federal authorization. And that was based on a thorough technical, economic, social and indigenous consultation process and review via the National Energy Board. The Prime Minister has tried to play a, a very interesting balancing act. On the one hand, uh, seeming to uh, be very pro-environment and, and sensitive to the interests of, uh, of the green uh, lobbies and on the other hand uh, making decisions that uh, uh, appear to be friendly to at least pipeline construction if not necessarily resource development generally. I mean you, you recall that he also uh, withdrew much of our frontier lands from oil and gas development which is uh, an action taken um, without significant amount of analysis as far as I'm aware uh, and that's received almost no attention in the media whatsoever um, but uh, he's f finding himself now in a situation where trying to, to achieve this balance places him in a difficult situation between one set of provinces and another on the, on the one hand you have the, the legitimate economic interests of, of Alberta and Saskatchewan and, 
and ultimately uh, Newfoundland and Labrador in the north. And on the other hand, you have uh, the efforts by, by provinces like British Columbia and to some extent Ontario and Quebec to extract money from uh, the transport companies. Uh, in effect, to impose an interprovincial trade barrier, which uh, will f the effects of which will fall upon the producing provinces. So I, I don't know how long the Prime Minister will be able to successfully maintain that balance. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Join us, donate, share our stuff. We need to have an open, civil debate on these important matters.